Almost every day, you hear that the new biggest controversy has just gone down. From the weirdos that get exposed for preying upon kids on Roblox and Minecraft, to the chronically online basement dwellers that run secret gooning cults from Discord. It's like it's a constant thing that happens around the world. One of these groups that has the worst offenders springing from it is a certain group that I'm sure you're familiar with. Furries. Now, I don't really want this video to sort of just be ragging on furries. There's plenty of videos like that. I sort of want this series to more so be trying to understand what the furry fandom is. And is it the factual fact that the majority of people are normal? So with this first episode, I'm going to be talking about the controversies and there's some pretty big ones. I've chosen some that have particularly sort of stood out from me and they're pretty vile. Before we can try to come to understand why it is groups like these that have some of the most vile offenders in its depths, we first must understand what exactly is a furry. A furry is someone who has an interest in anthropomorphic animals, that is, animals with human-like traits or characteristics. The most defining characteristics is the animal costumes that they wear, termed fursuits, and their furry identities, called fursonas. They definitely stand out in a crowd with their neon-coloured dog costumes, but baked beneath this seemingly harmless fandom is the grime that one could only hope to find in hell. The following is a brief overview of some of this grime. Hypnotist Sappho is a self-proclaimed VR chat hypnotist, real name Val. Hypnotist Sappho created her channel in the year of 2015, uploading her first video somewhere in 2021. This has to be left a little to speculation, as most of the videos have either been privated or deleted. The oldest video which I was able to define is dated with an upload date of July 11th, 2021. Up until a point, most of these videos would seem somewhat normal-ish. Nothing too crazy, just a little weird. This was until September of the same year, when she released her quote-unquote coming out about things video, where she said in her own words, I am a zoophile. You did not mishear that. I am a zoophile. I do not have a thing for humans. I am more attracted to dogs like German Shepherds. In this video, she also tried to claim that abusing dogs was on the perspective as gay people coming out. Thing can be very difficult, especially if it's something that society currently views with disgust or is a bit dangerous to even come out with with the way that things are right now and it's a lot like when homosexuals were coming out in the 1960s after this video was posted she faced major backlash to the shock of no one but this was not the nail in the coffin for hypnotist sappho releasing a video such as for the haters which is a 17 second MLG meme dog fucking thing, which I can't really summarize, so you should just watch. Hypnotist Sappho. Dog fucker. Has joined your lobby. Also, her Twitter around this time was as vile as her YouTube channel which included things like the Z letter in the Greek alphabet, which is synonymous for being used by zoophiles, and MAP, which is basically an abbreviation for pedophiles. Sappho also had a not safe for work Twitter account where she would post zoo and underage furry artwork 
though this account was suspended. She also tried at some stage to make a zoo file group or something to that effect, which fell through. She also has been documented a number of times talking to people who are underage, and at the climax of her story, also tried to fake a death. This didn't work, and allegedly she was arrested at some stage, and now apparently stays off social media. But only time will tell what will happen to old hypnotist Sappho. Only time will tell. Fox on Nightfire, a zoophile child predator Nazi, best known for his group, the Furry Raiders, a neo-Nazi furry group whose logos resemble a certain Austrian painter's own. Even his fursona is named after that same famous Austrian painter. Their own beginning started on the online game Second Life, which is quite popular in the furry community, or was. The Furry Raiders being established with Foxler and three other members. Their infamous logo was inspired by a late 2000s group, the Furzies. Weirdly enough, their own group's ideology is one of free expression, which directly clashes with the ideology that this group and its logos and other such aspects is based on. From hoarding rooms to attempt to get a furry convention shut down, to then releasing those rooms, and complaining that the convention quote unquote handled the situation wrong. Well, and, uh, I, 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 you know, personally didn't think it was a wise idea for RMFC to actually point at the people that had the rooms, which was me and the, the group, Furry Raiders. Yeah. Um, we could have handled it a lot more exclusively under the table. Yeah. And got it all worked out. And to alleged Furry Raider members saying that they would shoot someone at a convention. For up here, who has the anti-FA, um, anti-FA, anti-FA symbol, which is the circle with the three arrows pointing down on their logo, you know, said, you remember that these neo-Nazi, this neo-Nazi group called the Furry Raiders is going to be at Rocky Mountain FurCon, so be caught, be wary and be cautious. And, you know, de dealing with the tongue-in-cheek of the current events, Dale responded with, I can't wait to deck them in the schnoz. And then somebody responded that with, well, I can't wait for them to pull up, the person you deck in the schnoz to pull out a gun and blow you away. I can't read it quote word for word because my first suit, these glasses don't work with the darn with this suit on, but that's basically what happened here. And so then it was like, whoa, that escalated quickly. Um, so do you really plan on bringing a firearm to the convention? And then, you know, that whole little thing happened. Deo reported this particular Twitter user to Twitter. Twitter banned the particular user. Rocky Mountain Furcon, we, like the problem is like we don't really know who this user is actually as a furry. They kind of came out of nowhere. Uh, we don't, I don't really know who they are. Um, I don't know what their ties are with the furry raiders, etc. To Fox himself being accused of bestiality, saying in his own words that all canines are sexual beings. I have four huskies of my own, both male and female, who all want to be sexual. Foxler has also been accused of child grooming, a number of times from engaging in cyber sex with a 13 year old, to trying to convince a 16 year old to run away from her parents, sending her money and a puppy. This man is degenerate through and through, who will stoop to unknown lows. Apart from being banned from a number of furry conventions, no real action has been taken to bring justice upon Foxler Nightfire. <laughs> this is by far the worst of the furry fandom that has ever been found to date, and one of the most talked about events as well. It is so large that I won't even be able to scrape its depths. This started in 2018 when a Twitter zoo file shared a link to a Telegram chat termed Zoo Sadism Evidence. It contained some of the most vile, disgusting and repugnant content and messages that have ever been created. Things such as violating a dead deer, people talking about violating a puppy to death. Hey, it's a uh, future editor here. 
Um, I was wrong. They didn't actually talk about violating a puppy to death. They did it. So, yeah. And plenty of other people talking about pedophilic actions they have done or wanted to do. And other such things that are beyond the most sick things you could imagine. One of the things that was really shocking was the fact that some very large furry content creators were part of this chat. People like Kiro the Wolf, who at this time is still active and has a YouTube channel consisting of 80,000 members. During this time, Kiro tried to refute these claims, saying that his account was hacked and that he never had sex with any animals. Other big such names in this chat was a character called Snake Thing, who was one of the worst offenders and he was actually arrested. Focusing back on Kiro, looking at his channel now, it is a definitely a big shock that the majority of his fans still defend him to this day, seeing comments saying that he is innocent and other such things, and he has technically been declared innocent by the police or not been uh, arrested, but personally, I think he's very much guilty. Only time will tell what will happen to Kiro. From looking at this, as someone who is not a part of the furry community, it would definitely seem like furries in general are quite despicable. But during my research, it seems like the majority of these furries have condemned these sick individuals. I think that personally, these furries are not all bad people, but it's the fact that these acts committed by these individuals are so grotesque and despicable that they have overshadowed the actual good side of the fandom. From this series that I'm creating, I hope that this will prove true and show that most furries are misunderstood people.